In our example two, we have a question uh, regarding a DC shunt motor. A 220 volts, 15 kilowatt DC shunt motor has a maximum efficiency of 88% at a speed of 800 RPM when delivering 85% of its rated output. The resistance of each shunt field is 75 ohms. So we are now told, determine the efficiency when the motor draws a current of 72 amps from the mains. When it draws a current of 72 amps from the mains. So here we are going to first in our solution, note down the parameters given before we start working on it. So in our solution, in our solution, we have our V is 220, 220 volts. Our power output or full load output, PO or full load is equal to full load output. That is the rated output. Yeah. The rated output which is equals to 15 kilowatt. 15 kilowatt. Mm -hmm. Maximum efficiency. Max efficiency. It's equal to 88 percent. Mm -hmm. Speed, our N is equal to 800 RPM. R shunt, R shunt, R shunt, now this is supposed to be 78. 78 ohms, 78 ohms. At maximum efficiency, at maximum efficiency, output power, output power, Output power will then be equal to, you are given the maximum efficiency of cars when it is delivering 85% of its rated output. Output power will be equal to 85 all over 100 times the full load output, which is 15 watts, 15,000 watts. That's 15 kilowatts. This one, when we calculate, we're going to get now 12,750 watts. 12,750 watts. That is at maximum efficiency, output power is that. Now, what about input power? Input power, input power. At maximum efficiency, at maximum efficiency, will be equal to, that is, output PO all over efficiency, which in this case is 12 of 750. We divide by 0 0.88, because maximum efficiency is at 88%. So this one will give us, this one will give us, This one will give us 14, 4, 88.63 watts. And that's output power at maximum efficiency. 
That is input power at maximum efficiency. From there, we can now compute for losses at maximum efficiency. So total losses, total losses at maximum efficiency will now be equal to input minus output. Input minus output, which is 14, 488.63 minus 12 of 750 watts, which gives us Seventeen thirty-eight point six four watts. That's total losses at maximum efficiency. But we know, but at maximum efficiency, at maximum efficiency, copper variable losses. is equal to constant losses, is equal to constant losses, is equal to constant losses, and therefore, the amateur copper loss, amateur copper loss, the amateur copper loss will be equal to losses divided by two, the, this implies what? Our IA squared RA will be equal to 1738.64, we divide by 2, which gives us what? If you divide this, we get 869.32 watts. So I a squared RA is equal to 869.32 watts. Now, what we don't have by now, we don't have something about the amateur resistance. It wasn't given, and from this expression, we can be able to obtain the amateur resistance. So we say this implies our RA will be equal to what? 869.32 divided by RA, divided by RA, divided by IA squared, not RA, divided by IA squared. So that is the expression that we can be able to use so that we can get the value of RA. But we don't still have IA. We must compute for it, eh? IA. So we proceed. So in a shunt motor, I shunt will be equal to V all over Arshant, V all over Arshant. And we are given Arshant as 78. So our V is 220. We divide by Arshant, which is 78. When we do this evaluation, only this. We get 2.82 amps. 2.82 amps. 
So input current, input current. at maximum efficiency, maximum efficiency will be equal to P in all over V. And what was our P in? The input power at maximum efficiency, it was 14, 488.63. Now we divide by 220. This one gives us what? This one is going to give us 65.86. 65.86 watts for 86 amps. 65.86 amps. This implies what? This implies our IA. IA at that particular instant will be I minus I shunt. Will be I minus I shunt which will be equal to 65.86 minus 2.82, which gives us 63.04 amps. 63.04 amps. Since IA is now known, we can now obtain our RA, the amateur resistance for that particular mo motor, which will be equal to amateur resistance for that particular motor, which will be equal to 8, um, 869.32 divided by IA, which is 63.04, then this one is square. If we evaluate this, we will get 0 0.219 amps, the ohms. 0 0.29, 0 0.219 ohms. So, after getting R A, meaning the parameters of the motor, we have our R shunt. We have our RA is there, so we can now evaluate anything about that motor because all the parameters are now present. The, 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 the indication of maximum efficiency has helped us to obtain the amateur resistance. So now we would like to know we we'll look to know the efficiency when it is drawing 72 amps from the supplies. When it draws 72 amps from the mains. Some input current, input current is now 72 amps. The new input current is now 72 amps. That is the new input current is 72 amps. Therefore, amateur current, amateur current, amateur current will now be equal to, amateur current we can call it, uh, let's call it IA2. Our IA2 will be equal to what? It will be equal to I2 minus I shunt. And what is our I2? 72 minus I shunt, which is 2, 2.82 amps. Now this one gives us 60. This one will give us 
amps. 69.18 amps. So if amateur current is available, we can now calculate our new amateur copper loss at that particular instant of amateur current. So we say amateur copper loss now. Amateur copper loss. will be equal to 69.18. We square, we multiply with Ra, which is 0 0.219, which will be equal to what? When we calculate this, We get 10, 48.1 watts. We get 10, 48.1 uh, watts. After getting the amateur copper loss, we can now get total losses. Total losses, total losses. Total losses will be the amateur copper loss plus constant losses, which is 1048.1 plus PC was equal to uh, the original amateur copper loss, which was 869. 0.32, because by that time the two were equal. So when we add this, we get now 19, 19, 17.42 watts, 0.42 watts. That is total losses when we are now drawing 72 amps from the mains. The motor is now drawing 72 amps from the mains. After getting the total losses, then now we can compute for the input power. Input power. Input power. Input power will now be equal to V times I2, which is equal to uh, V was 220, 220 times I2, 72, which gives us 15840, 15840 watts. That is 15840 watts. With input power available, total losses available, we can now evaluate the efficiency at this new loading. So efficiency, when the motor, when the motor is drawing, is drawing 72 amps from the supply, the supply will be equal to and the motor is withdrawing 72 amps from the supply will be equal to input minus losses all over input times 100 which will be equal to 15840 15840 Minus 1917.40. All over 15840. And if we evaluate this, then we multiply here by 100.
which will get 87.89%. 87.89%. And that is the efficiency of the motor when drawing 72 amps from the supply. So in our example three, we are given some data that pertain to a short shunt compound generator. The amateur resistance is given, series field resistance is also given, shunt field resistance is given. Then we are told we need to have contact drop. There is also contact drop per brush. Core loss is also given, mechanical loss is given. This is a, this is a, a machine, a DC machine, where we are given almost everything. Uh, the only thing that we need to do, maybe how we are going to calculate our what? Our losses. So what is required? Calculate the efficiency of the generator when it delivers 440 amps at 500 vol volts. So what is required here is just to evaluate the variable losses. With the variable losses known, we have already the constant losses given in two divisions, that is core loss and mechanical loss. If we have all the losses ready, then we can be able now to evaluate for our efficiency. So in our solution, since these are recorded nicely, we can have in our solution uh, a diagram to help us evaluate to help us calculate what we need. So in our solution, let's have a diagram representing the same. So it is a short shunt generator. So we'll have the series filled up here. And then we are going to have a shunt branch, which is now short. It's a generator. We'll now have our much somewhere here. So we are now saying it is delivering five hundred volts. 500 volts is there, and uh, the current flowing. The current that is being delivered is 440, so this is 440, 440 amps. So that is the current being delivered. This uh, R shunt, shunt field resistance is 50 ohms. This is R shunt. R series, RSE, we are given this one as 0 0.025 ohms. And this is our amateur. So that is that. So from this, we'll start by getting the output of our generator. We need to know what is the output because that one will be required in our calculation towards the efficiency of the machine. Output of the generator will be equal to V times I which is equal to 500 times 440. If we evaluate this, you're going to get 220 kilowatt. 220 
kila watu so now the voltage across this particular shunt field circuit the voltage across there will be voltage drop here plus the what plus the terminal voltage of that particular generator so this voltage drop we add to this terminal voltage will give us the drop across our shunt field winding so we now say Voltage across shunt field winding, across shunt field winding. Across shunt field winding will be equal to V plus I. R S E, where I is the output current, and our V is 500. Now we add to I. Our I is 440. Now times the R S E 0.025. Mm. So this one will give us 511 volts. That will be 511 volts. Now, I shan't. I shan't. I shan't will be equal to, uh, I shan't is normally equal to, the voltage across that shunt winding will now be equal to 511 all over 50. The voltage across the shunt field circuit divided by the resistance of the shunt or shunt field winding, which is 50. So if we evaluate this one, we get we get 10.22 amps. 10.22 Amps. That is I shunt. With I shunt ready according to this circuitry, we can be able, that is our I shunt, this is our IA, uh, and this was our I. So I a will be equal to I, I plus I shunt, which is equal to 440 plus 10.22. Uh, oh, just a minute, just a minute. Yeah. What are we doing? This one is our IA. That is our IA. Uh -huh. IA is equal to this, so this one gives us 450.22 amps. 450.22 amps. That is our IA. With the IA ready, we can get how much a copper loss. How much a copper loss? Which will be equal to how much a copper loss? Will be equal to I A squared R A, which will be equal to four fifty point two two squared. We multiply with R A, and our R A is zero point zero five. 0.05, which gives us, oh, let's calculate, 
135 watts. So that is 10, 135 watts. That's amateur copper loss. With amateur copper loss, we can get brass contact loss. Brass contact loss. Which is equals to 2 times the voltage drop per brass, 1 times the current passing through that armature, which is 450.22. So this one will give us 900.44 watts. 900.44 watts. Next, we need series field. Series field. Copper loss, series field, copper loss. Which will be equal to I squared RSE, which is equal to 440 times 0 0.025. Which now, when we calculate, 440 we square here, that one is square. So, forty-eight forty. Forty-eight forty watts. So, the variable losses are already calculated. A much a copper loss, brass contact loss, Series field copper loss, or we are still remaining with shunt field copper loss. Still remaining with shunt field copper loss. So, shunt field copper loss. is always equal to voltage across that shunt field circuit, which was 511, times I shunt, times I shunt, and our I shunt was 10.22. 10.22. Which one we calculate now, we get us 50.5222. Five to two point four two point four two watts point four two watts. The Shanfell copper loss. Now we can compute for total losses. We can compute for total losses. Total losses now. will be equal to the amateur copper loss, 10,135. Brass contact loss, 900.44. Plus series field copper loss, 4840. Plus shunt field copper loss, 5222.42. Plus mechanical loss, 900 watts plus colors 2600 watts. When we sum all this, we get 24597. 0.86 watts. If total losses are known and we know the output, then we can now evaluate, and we can now calculate for efficiency. Efficiency now will be equal to uh, output, which is 220 kilowatts. 
All of us, two twenty kilowatt plus losses twenty four five ninety seven point eight six. Then we multiply by a hundred. This one will now give us what percentage? This will be equal to 89.94%. And that is now the efficiency of the generator that we are given those parameters for. Now, for today, we are going to stop here. Our next subtopic is still under losses, is still under efficiency analysis. Now we'll be moving to testing of DC machines. Testing of DC machines. And from the testing of DC machines, we will even move up to what is known as efficiency test. How do we test the efficiency of a DC machine? There are various methods where we are going uh, we, uh, there, there are various methods of testing for DC machines. And then we test the efficiency of that particular machi machine. So let's do that one next time.